thanks for tuning in. So over the weekend, I had this idea uh, that I wanted to see if I could bring to life and I wanted to share the results. They actually turned out uh, pretty impressive. What we're looking at right now is a panorama that I was able to uh, shoot using drone blocks with AirSim. So we've been working with drone blocks integration for AirSim for about six months. And previously I shared uh, some of the things that you can do with AirSim and PX4 hardware in the loop simulation. And in this video, I'm going to talk through uh, using drone blocks to create a panorama mission in AirSim. You'll get to see uh, this landscape environment. And then I'll walk through taking those images, stitching them using PT GUI, and then making them web accessible with KR Pano. Now I realize that's a bunch of different tools. This video isn't going to be so much about how to create amazing panoramas if you know with the DJI hardware nowadays, you just click a button and it takes care of everything. But I thought it was really cool to be able to uh, take simulated photos from uh, AirSim environment in Unreal Engine, pull those out, stitch them, and make them available. Now, you'll notice up here that there's a big hole in the sky. If you guys have ever shot panoramas, you know how challenging it can be to stitch skies or anything where there's not a whole lot of control points. So in this video, I'm not going to talk about how we resolve this issue, but I am going to uh, walk through the process of bringing this to life. Let me start with just a quick refresher on AirSim. I did a video where we loaded in a custom environment and flew around using a Tyrannus with the uh, Unreal Engine build of AirSim. Now, AirSim is supported both in Unreal Engine and Unity, but for the sake of this video, it's going to be all about Unreal Engine. And AirSim is definitely one of the most robust simulators that I've seen out there for being able to programmatically control a simulated drone. And there's all sorts of uh, cool projects built around AirSim. So the one thing that I'm going to point you to is this releases page. Underneath the assets link, there are many different builds. And what these are, these all have AirSim incorporated into them, but they're different environments. So for this one, I have the landscape mountains environment that I've downloaded, but there's this new one called Abandoned Park. So you can grab any of these and go through this process. I'll also point you to this Gitbook page that I created a while back. I'll put a link to it below. There are some other environments that we've created but the most important thing is that you'll want to grab this Drone Blocks for AirSim app. But as of right now, this is only Windows compatible, but you just uh, click it, it'll download to your machine. And I'm not gonna bore you with the download for AirSim. I'll go ahead and do that now, and then we'll jump into how to make this work. I have both the AirSim download with the Landscape Mountains environment, as well as Drone Blocks. Both of these are unzipped. One thing that I want to mention is, you'll need to go into your AirSim environment. And by default, there's an executable file. This is called Landscape Mountains. And what I've done is done an Alt, click and drag, and that will create a shortcut. And I've named that shortcut Launch Me. Let me go ahead and delete this one. The reason that we have this shortcut is I've added a couple of parameters. I've said, hey, let's launch this in a windowed version. And this is the resolution, 1024 by 576. Otherwise, if you launch this, it will take up the full screen. It'll be really hard to uh, navigate around. What we wanna do is have drone blocks next to the AirSim environment so that we can do our block coding as well as uh, watch the code execute as the mission runs. The other thing I'll point you to, the resolution of the images taken by the simulated drone are rather small. So there's a settings file that I've created and you'll be able to see it here. For the capture settings, we want 1024 by 576. Uh, you can bump that up. These are the size of the images that I used to uh, demonstrate the pano at the beginning of this video. So what you do with that settings file is under documents and AirSim, you'll notice that I've placed it here. I'll just go ahead and show what that looks like. It's identical to what I just showed you in the Git book. And these settings files allow you to do a lot of different uh, customization within AirSim. If you don't have that file in place, the settings file will be generated for you. But once again, you won't have these higher resolution uh, images available to you. So what I'll do now is I'll go back to this and I'm going to click the launch me 
which will launch AirSim in a windowed environment. You'll be asked if you want to use car simulation, so we'll, sl we'll select no. So we have the quad rotor. You can see AirSim there. Then I'm going to go back to the downloads folder. I'm going to launch drone blocks. We'll need to make sure since this is the first time running it, we'll accept that and we'll click run anyway. You'll notice that there are some simulated GPS coordinates. There's our world coordinates, our yaw, all sorts of cool data that you can get from AirSim. And here you can see just some of the different blocks that we have access to. Navigation blocks, camera, we have the ability to take uh, different photo types. AirSim is very uh, robust in the fact that we have access to a depth camera, segmentation, RGB, so you can use drone blocks to uh, access those. Let me make these blocks a little bigger. And then we have environment variables, like you can set up wind and weather. The weather is cool. It's actually very realistic looking. You have these different weather types and the intensity. Then of course, just your basic programming, your loops, logic, and math. If I demonstrate what this mission does, we'll arm the drone, we'll take off, we'll fly up. If you're not familiar with Unreal, a negative Z is actually moving up or gaining altitude, and then a positive Z is going down. So that's just something to keep in mind. We're pitching the gimbal, and then we're taking a series of photos. I did mention earlier that uh, stitching skies can be difficult, so I've only pitched up to 30 degrees where there are clouds, and the stitching software should be able to uh, find control points between the images. We repeat this six times. We yaw 60 degrees and take a photo for a total of 360. Then at zero or at the horizon, if you will, we're going to repeat eight times. Yaw 45, we're going to pitch down and continue that as we go down and then we ultimately take the final shot. We fly back to the ground, we land and we disarm. So what I'll do is go ahead and window these side by side. So I'll use my Windows key and the left arrow. Then I'll select the air sim environment to go on the right side. Let me zoom out. I'll launch this. We'll see the drone respond. You'll notice on the left, it's showing we're taking off. Then the altitude or the fly Z is activated. It's being highlighted and that's what our drone is doing. And then it's going to follow uh, this sequence of code blocks. And when I'm in AirSim, I could hit F. We're getting a FPV view. You'll see that we're currently executing the plus 30 and the yawing 60. So that tells us the camera's pointed up a little bit. Then we're pointing straight ahead. We'll take eight shots with a 45 degree yaw sequence. And while that's happening, let me show you my pictures folder. In there, you'll see drone blocks. And then you'll notice these images being taken. So these are from today, 510. I'll go ahead and delete these others just so we can not get confused. There we see the images being taken and stored here in this folder. I'll go back. I'll put drone blocks back next to it. It looks like we're currently taking four shots at a negative 60 degree angle. And this is really a great tool if you're testing code, if you want to do simulation and get photos and then perhaps process them and post. In this case, I'm processing them for the panorama. Let me just go back to the drone view. It's going down and then going to land and disarm. I've switched over to my Mac to uh, finish this process. The software that I use, both PT GUI and KR Pano are, are both licensed to my Mac computer. I've gone ahead and put these photos in Dropbox. I've downloaded them. You can see all of them here. And what I'll do now is go into PT GUI and if you're not familiar with this process, I did a video a few years ago that really covers this in depth. And if any of you would like to see an updated version, just let me know. I've been doing a lot with panoramas lately, and I think it's just a really amazing experience to be able to uh, simulate this process using AirSim. I've gone ahead and clicked load images in PT GUI. I've selected all of the images. Now, here's the interesting thing. A lot of times, if you're shooting a panorama with a camera, a digital SLR, or a real drone, uh, there will be metadata. So you won't see this information about the sensor size. Now, what I'm going to do for this is just do some of these default settings. I'll do a uh, not applicable 
not a camera, and click OK. Then for focal length, I'm just going to put normal lens, not a fish eye. We'll select OK. Now all of our images are in here. Now PT GUI is, is pretty magical. You have many other tools that you can use as well. I believe Lightroom uh, does stitching. I know there's Microsoft Ice. There are some free options out there, but uh, PT GUI is really one of my favorites. In this scenario, it tells us uh, PT GUI was not able to uh, add control points for everything, so we need to do that manually. You'll see this little gap here. So I'm going to click yes. It shows that image two does not have any control points. Now keep in mind, if we look at image two on the right compared to image one, you can understand why it might be challenging for the software to identify control points. In this landscape mountains environment, there's a lot of fog and, and lighting. And you'll notice that both of these images looked washed out, but you can tell here from this mountaintop and this mountaintop, that's identical to this one and this one. You think about the camera yawing, getting different angles that show these mountaintops from different perspectives. So what I'll do is by mouse over image number two, I'm gonna set this control point here by clicking then I'll go over here and I'll match that with what I believe is the same control point over here. So that's the first, these two match up. Then I'll go to this other mountaintop. Let's take this for example at the very peak. We'll do it here with this one. I've generally found it pretty useful to have three or more control points. So let me just, I'm doing this kind of a rush job, but let me uh, find this one right here. And then I'll go to what I believe is a similar point over here. We have three control points. I'll go ahead and go back to Project Assistant, Run Optimizer. Let's click Yes. It says this is very good. Now we'll go back and take a look at the preview. You'll notice that that gap is gone. We've done that matching. And just to not bore you guys with this entire process, I'm going to click Create Panorama. We'll use 100% of the size, click Create Panorama button. You'll see that this image will then get exported here. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at it. This is our source folder. This is the spherical panorama stitched together from all of the individual images. And you'll also notice that there is no sky. I could have certainly cropped the blackout just so that the panorama viewer does not go all the way up, but for now I'm going to leave it as is. I have my KR Pano folder opened up. I'm going to go to KR Pano Tools. One side note is if you're not familiar with this process, maybe you come from the world of DJI where you just press a button and then a stitch panorama automatically appears on your device. You're able to upload it. In the world of, let's say, DIY, where you're taking all the photos individually, and then stitching them together. So you acquire the photos, you then stitch them with a tool like PT GUI or Lightroom or whatever tool you prefer. Then you run it through a processing tool that creates that spherical look. It takes that spherical image and creates these little tiles into cubes that ultimately give you that nice 360 web view. And there are services out there that will allow you to take the stitched image that we just had upload it. Facebook, for example, Google has the ability to do that. But I enjoy managing the process, hosting it myself, so that's why I'm going into this level of detail. So in KR Pano, we're going to uh, load in the stitch panorama file. You can see here that it's converting the sphere to cube, going through a bunch of different steps, and it, it's really quick. And what I'll do now is I'll click Open Output Folder, Inside of here is this uh, little server that will allow us to launch the stitch panorama in a web view. And this is what I started the video off with. I uploaded it to uh, Amazon S3. I'll share a link beneath the video. I encourage you to download a build of AirSim, uh, run through this process, and share your results. I'd love to see them. I'd also like some feedback on the uh, DroneBlocks version. It's very early. I'd say alpha, so there are a few bugs. Certain blocks do not work. I'm going to continue working on drone blocks, having tighter integration with AirSim. I hope you dive into it, download these, test it out. If you have any questions or comments, 
please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.